I'm Eric Chemi, and this is Politely Pushy. Excited for today's show. Today we've got the CEO and founder of Hotel Engine. His name is Eli Wallen. This is a super interesting company because it's that middle ground, right? These big giant companies, they've got the travel management systems for all their corporate travel, which you know, the last couple of years there hasn't been a lot of it, but it's starting to come back. And the small, tiny companies, it's a lot of DIY, these medium-sized companies. It's, hey, book it on your own card. Book it like you're a normal consumer and we'll deal with it later. That's not the way a growing company should operate. So that's the the space that for small and medium sized companies that hotel engine is finding that gap, helping them do their travel, all their transportation and their lodging. This lodging performance network, I think is the phrase that they use. So I'm excited to bring on Eli Wallen on the show today. And Eli, tell me exactly, how did you get this idea? Were you traveling all the time for work? Like why, why hotel engine? Yeah, great question. I started uh, Hotel Engine from just demand. I, I have another company called Travelers Haven, and I started early in my career, you know, 14 years ago or so. Um, and that company did corporate housing for primarily the traveling uh, healthcare space, so traveling nurses and traveling docs. And we did corporate housing all over the US. Uh, well, those customers said, Can you book hotels for us as well? And for a while, I, I, I didn't understand the value that we could create, right? I said, do it yourself, right? You go to hotels.com or you go to price on or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, they were pretty persistent. And, and once we started to, to, uh, lean in there, we realized that there was real opportunity to create, to add value for these customers. And so, uh, we started a manual team at first, just booking hotels. Uh, and then we said, Hey, there's gotta be a better way. And so we started to invest in technology, some R and D and, uh, we created a uh, hotel engine. It's a weird thing. You got dragged into it by your customers. It's not like you had this idea said, I'm going to solve this problem. Like they were telling you the problem said, we want you to solve it. And you're like, I, I don't, I don't have a solution right now. Yeah. I did not wake up one day and say, I want to compete with Priceline and booking and Expedia. No. Yeah. <laughs> so how would you describe the need in the marketplace? Is, did my summary match up? Is that medium sized company? You said traveling nurses, traveling doctors, what would your summary be of where is this need? It's, it's tough. Uh, to, to say any one thing there, because we do, we work with very, very large customers and, you know, down to small, medium size. I think the best way for us to frame it up is unmanaged lodging companies that have unmanaged programs, um, is, is really, I think where we find our, our sweet spot and where we can create the most value. So size of company really depends, you know, there's no real direct correlation of revenue or number of employees to travel. Uh, with a lot of the companies we work with, you might have 100,000 employees and spend X in lodging. And then you have you know, maybe 100 employees and they spend you know, a pretty significant amount as well in lodging. So it's a bit all over the place for us. Uh, but unmanaged is really the key that we look for. Unmanaged is the key. So then what do you tell customers when you're going on a sales pitch, you're going the presentation? What do you say to them to say, OK, sign up for us? Is it just stopping on manage? I'm sure they've got reasons for why they do that. But what's what's your pitch to them? Yeah, you know, I think the way that we look at it is it's not about stopping unmanaged. It's continue doing what you're doing and what you're used to, uh, but allow us to help you make better decisions, more informed decisions, um, you know, with some data, uh, allow us to help with reconciliation and fraud. Uh, with some of the tools that we have that, that help prevent those things uh, or just streamline reconciliations and prevent fraud. So uh, for us, I think it's really about, um, you know, finding some of those pain points of just completely going it uh, alone, as you will. Um, and uh, but really, we're not trying to change or disrupt someone's workflow that they are accustomed to. And frankly, is a you know pretty easy process. Talk about your investment right now are you series a b c and what's your pitch to investors on why they should give you money and how you're going to return it back to them yeah it's a good question um you know we um we we were bootstrapped until two years ago two and a half years ago uh my other company helped get hotel engine off the ground for the early days and then we invest uh we we took some money um but we're very very capital efficient uh, we're not one, and I'm not I'm not throwing anybody under the bus here, but we're not a company that's out burning tens of millions of dollars every year. Um, we're we're efficient. Uh, we're pretty tight uh, with with spend, and um, you know, frankly, it's working for us. So, what I would say to investors, you know, um, 
we're not looking for money right now. We don't need it. Uh, but you know, when that time comes, which I'm sure it will, um, you know, let's talk, but, uh, you know, we're, we're not, uh, pursuing it aggressively right now. So right now you need more customers than you need investors. It sounds like, you know, it's talent more than anything I would say. Really you know, recruiting talent, talent. Yeah. I mean, that's where it's at, right? That's where our growth goes. We have to hire ahead. Uh, growth is there. It's, it's very aggressive. Uh, and so are our hiring plans. And in this economy, in this market, uh, everyone knows it's a, it's a, it's a tight, tight labor market and where um, everyone is competing for top talent. And, you know, we're no exception. We have a lot of great organic inbound, but uh, we do need to, you know, find, find those people that are really ener energized by our DNA, by our culture. Who do you lose out to? If you can't get someone to work for you, where do they go instead? Like who's your competition for talent? Yeah, geez. You know, the, the nice thing is we're hiring all over the U S now. So we're not, we, we, you know, it's not a market by market anymore. If we don't get them, then, you know, X tech company in Denver gets them. Uh, we have a 92% offer to accept rate, which, which we're proud of. And so, uh, we, we win, we win the battle a lot. Um, but I would say it's, it's still real. There's some great companies out there and, uh, I don't know if there'd be one or two that I could list. Um, it really is, you know, the people that, that are energized by growth and kind of hustle and, and want to, want to be a part of something, you know, make an impact. Uh, I think we have a pretty good shot of winning those candidates most of the time. Right. Right. And then how many employees do you have right now? Just over 400. Four, oh, that's, that's pretty big then. I mean, for, for a growing company, you've gotten a lot. Is that let's say the last year or two, you've gotten most of those people? Yeah, last year, this time we had 130. So wow. it's grown quite a bit. And so it's gone to this point now where you don't even know everyone coming in the door, right? Before I imagined you were involved in every single hire and at some point you have to let that go. It's like, I don't know who these people are anymore. There's a new person every day. That's right. Unfortunately, that's the case, especially in this remote <laughs> world too. You know, I mean, before I would maybe see you coming by and now we have people all over the place and, and unfortunately I don't have the have the ability to, to meet everybody. So the people, like, how much of this is about scaling through people versus scaling through, through AI software? Tech? Like, how does this work? Because if it's a marketplace, right, it's, um, we got customers, they're using the system, they can book their travel, they can book their hotel in these places. Why do you need so many more people if it should just be what well, we really need are more customers and we need more, more places for them to yeah. book? It's a big problem to solve. Um, you know, so when you think about product engineering data, you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time understanding the problems and the client needs and building solutions for them. When you get outside of that, just the scale around, uh, the growth, you know, you have to support it. You, you know, we don't want 30 minute hold times, right? We don't want 10 minute hold times. Uh, and so, you know, you have to hire ahead again and you've got to bring in great talent, get them up to speed for. Uh, the growth that we're experiencing in the platform. So from our, our member support team uh, to preventative teams, data, sales, obviously is a large, large group. Uh, we got to get the word out there. Um, and, and then you need all the back office to help support and catch, catch the demand that's happening. You mentioned a good point. You don't want people on hold for 30 minutes, 10 minutes even. So are you hiring, let's say you went from 130 to 400. Of that 270, is it mostly you know customer support? Is it mostly technology? Is it mostly sales? Like, how do you proportion that out? Yeah, engineering, uh, sales, and support are three largest largest departments. Um, one is not much bigger than the other. I think they um, actually. I think engineering might be our largest largest department these days, um, and then it would probably be sales, and then it'd be support. Um, yeah. How do you get your message out there, right? Like you want the media to understand what you're doing. You want to get in certain verticals, certain press. Like you've, we've talked about the traveling medical staff. We've talked about traveling construction workers, right? If you've got to go build something, you need to get a team there and make something happen. So what's your challenge right now in terms of getting people to understand the story and talk about Hotel Engine? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I think our biggest challenge is, is just awareness, right? There's a lot of new great companies that pop up all the time and uh, you're competing for uh, just the airtime, the space of, of someone's attention, which, you know, these days people are bombarded by so many things, services, products, this and that. 
it's hard to really be able to sift through what's real and what's not and what's worth your time, right? Because people, I mean, people are busy these days. So what I would say, I mean, that's that's the biggest challenge is building trust in, a, in an easy, lightweight way. Um, and frankly, we have a, a new brand and there's a lot of travel uh, companies out there. And so we're up against, I think, probably just the noise of the overall market and industry size and trying to carve ourselves out um, and, and communicate our clear value propositions. I was going to say, you know, a normal person might ask, well, what was it like the last couple of years? Nobody was traveling, nobody was going anywhere, but you're in this interesting niche where people have to travel. They can't do their job from home, right? Nurses have to be in a certain spot. Doctors have to be in a certain spot. Were there, were there points over the last couple of years where you thought, oh my gosh, we're, we're going to go out of business here? Or is there actually this confidence of we picked the right thing to focus on because this can never be automated. This can never go to Zoom. Yeah, we... Um you know, I'd say we're, we're a scrappy team and we found opportunity through COVID. Uh, we were fortunate to be able to pivot. Uh, we were fortunate enough to, to have a team that was able to be agile uh, as we went through COVID because there, there was quite a few, um, you know, scary times when COVID first came in. Yeah, we were, we were all going, what the heck is going to happen? Um, but yeah, we work with essential workforce uh, all over the U.S. and I think that that helped carry us through. And now we're, you know, a much broader base. And, and as the company's grown, it's supported uh, uh, this growth, and we've diversified our our stream, our revenue model. Um, so it's we're, we're more insulated. So, what do you mean by that? You have diversified your revenue model. What are the other places to make money? Yeah, so we have we have a handful of um, uh, features, right? That uh, premium features internally that help our customers, and we're starting to move into working more directly with our hotel partners um, and giving them data and insights and analytics into how they can perform and run their businesses better. Uh, and so as we continue to do that, we're starting to find new ways to create value with, with the data that we see and that we collect every day. That's like every company, right? Every company is becoming a data company. We've got a product, but we're really just trying to get this data and we can make money off the data. What are some, what are some insights that you're seeing? What's an example of interesting data that, that your hotel partners are like, oh, I, I didn't know that? Well, I mean, this one might seem super obvious, but uh, refundability, just the re refundability of, of rates and, and non-refundable rates and the, sh the, you know, the uptick uh, by a hotel offering a refundable room versus non uh, i know the hotels don't want to give up a, a you know a reservation when something changes but um the propensity for someone to buy and click on a, a refundable room is significantly higher than the non and i know that seems very very you know basic uh you know um it's a basic concept but i think when you really see the work behind the scenes of how much shift and how much demand goes to one area versus the other from where we sit, it's quite interesting. And so that's ways that we can help our hotel partners be more, you know, run a better business. What are, what are some things that companies can do? When I think about not, not the hotels, but the actual customer companies, right? The, the traveling staff, what, what are those companies able to do to save money, right? Because this, the hotel pricing to me, it feels like airline pricing. It's a mystery. Everyone's got a different price for the same hotel. We see all the ads from the consumer point of view, but, but what is it really that cus that corporate customers can do to actually get a discount here. Yeah, you know, what we find a lot is is wasted nights. Um, hotels, or I'm sorry, companies book more nights than they need a lot, very often. And so the timing of the booking has a big impact on price. Uh, how many days before the stay, uh, as well as, you know, unused nights. There's so many out there and we have tools that can help uh, uh, let, um, the, the, the agents, the coordinators that are booking a lot of the travel, they don't do this or don't do that. Or did you know that you continue to do this? So we can look at it and, and start to give suggestions on better booking behavior and how to save their companies real money. What are, what are the big differences individual travel versus corporate travel? Because my imagination when you're talking to, let's say, investors or other people that are not in the corporate travel world, they only have the experience of their individual travel, right? Oh, I went to the, the aggregator sites and I found a price and I did that. What do they just don't understand about how different corporate travel is? 
you know, the fact is, Eric, I haven't spent enough time on the leisure side to really know. <laughs> your own <laughs> business, your own business. Yeah. You know, um, I could tell you that, it, you know, it is different. You know, our business in particular, we have uh, a lot of the, the days to stay again. You know, people are booking same day because their their business is on, you know, on demand like that. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, same day bookings a day or two out. And I'm sure that looks quite a bit different than, than most leisure travel. Um, but, but, you know, I don't, I don't have a lot of data on the leisure side to give a good comparison. Is it the kind of thing that you guys would ever think about expanding into in the future? Or is it just such a different world that they almost don't overlap? Is it sort of like other than the fact that there's a hotel, is there yeah. even really no, no similarity? Uh, um, I think that there is a high likelihood that we start to do something um, uh, with with consumers in the future. Um, when that is, I can tell you we don't have immediate plans to do that. But you know, you're building. You know, we've got great relationships on the hotel side. We've got a you know an incredible product and engineering team. And I think that you know we'll continue to find ways to create value uh, for consumers. Um, albeit, you know, however different that looks from the consumer side. Um, it's not a near-term thing, but it's, I'm sure, something we'll do in the future. You mentioned refundability. Obviously, customers like that, right? There's a little more goodwill. There's just more flexibility. Like, I can trust this hotel to do what I need to do. That seemed to be a big deal during COVID, right? It came up. It seems to be sticking around. How much are you seeing now that travel's picking up? The pandemic is basically over. Whether whether the virus is still there or not, people are asking it's over. How many of these things are going to stay? Right? How many of the COVID things are going to stay versus they're all in a rush to go back to what it was two years ago? No refunds, no this, no that. We're going back to big, bad hotel business. Uh, if I knew that answer, I'd, I'd, I'd be in a, I don't know if I'd be in a different spot, <laughs> but I'd, I'd, I'd be more informed on, you know, um, you know I, I think the hotels are learning a lot right now, right? I think they're, they're understanding the new buying behavior and what customers want. And I think we'll see those innovations uh, happened probably more rapidly, right? I think COVID for a lot of industries, even outside of travel, was a wake-up call of how to do business maybe differently. And I think the way that hotels operate and work with guests um, is going to evolve. And I think what's going to happen is probably this just accelerated things quite a bit on wherever this takes us. Your company's grown a lot. Most of the people are not in Colorado where you are. How do you manage that staff? How do you run a company? Is there the idea? I, mean, I can see an office behind you. It looks like a nice industrial loft over there. How do you okay. think about your own workforce and, and where they're going to be located? And how do you get the best out of them? Yeah, I know this isn't the most popular answer, but I absolutely love people coming together and being in the office. Um, my own team if anybody watches this is going to cringe because they're, they're going to be worried that we're going to make some major changes um but listen you gotta you gotta listen to the people you gotta listen to your team and you gotta you gotta be agile and serve them just like we're trying to serve our, our customers in a great way every day so uh people are starting to come back to the office fully organic right there's we don't have any mandates um and frankly i think on this past wednesday we were overbooked um and, and so it's, um, it's a great sign. I think the thing that a lot of people miss is, is you know, seeing these groups come together, uh, you know, in person and the collaboration and the laughter and the high fives, right? You can't really schedule that in a Zoom meeting, right? You can't say, hey, how about just 30 minutes and we're gonna talk about what we did with a group of people. I mean, you can, it's just, it's, it's, it doesn't work like that. And, you know, we're not seeing that. so. Uh, I love when the office is full and I can look back and see just people engaging and interacting in ways that I know that they wouldn't be on Zoom. Um, and so, frankly, I think it's a challenge for all business uh, executives to, you know, try to find the, the common ground, the middle ground that works for their business. Um, I would love to see more people come together more often, but I understand, you know, it's, uh, it's a personal choice and um, it's going to evolve. There's no doubt about that. Well, it, I'm glad that you're saying you want people together because that is the whole point of your business, right? Like we, our business is for companies to get people where they need to go. So at least it makes sense that there's, there's a matching ethos there. Before we go, if people that inspire you, who do you look up in the tech industry or the travel industry? Who do you look up to as 
I want to steal some of their ideas. I'm going to read their books. I'm going to see what their business plans were. Who are those people, those executives that you're following? Uh, uh, lately, um, it'd be Frank Schlotman um, from Snowflake. Uh, he just recently wrote, wrote a book, uh, Amp It Up. Great book. Um, different style, right? You got you to gotta be into that. Um, a lot of it resonates with, with what he talks about and how his management style is. And he clearly he's been extremely successful multiple times. He's had multiple great runs. So he would be um, near term top of mind for me. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, but I know it's not everyone's style, right? Someone's going to read the book and go, whoa, okay. You know, it's, uh, but I think, it, you know, there's real accountability, ownership, the hustle though, it pulls, pulls dates forward, buys for action, right? Uh, will to win some of these things that I think are, are crucial in an extremely competitive market. And then finally, where will you be happiest a year from now? What are your goals, right? You're 400 employees right now. Is there a certain number that you're looking at either for revenues, hotel partners, customers, investment value? What's, what's the one year from now thing that would make you happiest? Yeah, so we don't give points for just headcount growth, right? So results have to, have to you know, follow. Um, so we have targets, of course. We have forecasts, of course. But I would say, um, you know, there's some big, there's some big opportunities for us. And I think, you know, us continuing or even accelerating growth from here would be a major accomplishment for this team. Uh, getting the folks that we've hired recently and will hire over the next couple of months um, fully integrated in, in the business and the culture and up to speed and thriving uh, is a big one, right? If, if those people are successful, you know, there's a high probability we will be too, because there's so much riding on. I think the success of all of these new hires and making sure that our culture doesn't get screwed up um, by bringing in, you know, so many new people. So we got to be tight there. So I think it's it's going to be really important that we keep the culture. Uh, and what happens if some what happens if somebody says to me, "Hey, I know I'm not a company, but I still want to get the better deals, the discounts. I want to be in their system." Can normal people sign up for this, or that's just absolutely no? No, we have to see a business yeah. account. Not today. You can't. Sorry. <laughs> Um, and what 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 makes it? What are you hiding? Like what is, what is the secret? What is the discount that you're getting? Why are why are the hotels giving you a discount that they're not giving otherwise? What what is that quid pro quo going on behind the scenes? Yeah, you know, so we're building our services to support businesses that have uh, a certain profile, right? And it's usually a person that is booking on behalf of multiple people, and so uh, that's the that's the structure. Um, for us. And, and frankly, uh, we want to do a really, really good job of that. Focus for us is extremely important. And having, um, you know, businesses, we know the persona, we know what struggles you have, we know what challenges you go through, uh, we know what, what your work looks like uh, when when booking a hotel. And so we can build more and more tools around that. And I think that that's, uh, it's a big part of, of why we want to keep it to business. So we can we know who the booker is. We know who our clients are. And, and so we can serve them as best as possible without diluting our focus. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Exclusive club until some point later, you open it up to the rest of the world. It reminds me of Facebook when it was just if you were in the specific colleges you could get in or Gmail was invite only. So the early days here. Eli, excited for what you're doing, where you're going to go. Appreciate the time today. Thank you so much, Eric. Appreciate it. Take care. Thank you to my guest and thanks for listening. Subscribe to get the latest episodes each week and we'll see you next time.